Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, also created another big staple in the industry, and it's called Git. To understand Git, let's take a scenario. Here's a four-member dev team that I was a part of. There's me, Ha, Connor, and John, and we built a travel app together. The scenario is like this. Sometimes we were writing code together or at home and all working on different features of our app. I would be working on the CSS layout while Connor was working on the logic for the shopping cart. Now imagine that I submit code and Connor quickly realizes that our app doesn't work anymore, which wouldn't be such a big deal if I could press undo a few times. However, there wouldn't be a way of retrieving a previous working version of our app if we didn't have version control. Git is sort of like having a time machine, but it's so much more powerful than that. So by the end of this video, you'll understand Git, branches, GitLab, GitHub, and how it all comes together so that writing code is manageable and trackable. We teach a lot here at Linode, so go ahead and subscribe to our channel. There's a lot to cover here, so let's get this episode started. What is Git? Git is a version control system that allows you to track changes and edits over time. I don't need to express the importance of saving versions. That's why Dropbox has version retrieval, Apple has Time Machine, Linux has Time Shift, and Microsoft has Windows Backup. Well, when it comes to writing code, that's sort of what Git does too. So Git is this underlying technology, and it's always keeping track of things in the background. But how do we install it? Git is incredibly easy to install using your terminal's command line. If you go to git-scm.com, the directions are right there. You can use git bash terminal or PowerShell, or on Macs, you can use Homebrew and some other options. For example, if you're on a Debian-based distro like Ubuntu, then you can type sudo apt install git all. Okay, so let's learn git init. Anytime you want to use git, then you need to initialize a repository. And the way you do that is through the command git init. And you'll notice that when you initialize a repo, then the hidden file .git is created. Don't edit that file. It's where all the repos information is stored and updated. So now what are repos? Well, anytime that you want to use Git on a project, then you need to initialize a repository or repo as it's called for short. GitLab is just a place to host the different apps that I've built. You can see here that I can look at the version history, which team member made each change and a lot more. The power of Git is in the reality that when you're writing code with other developers, then things can quickly get confusing and conflicting. Multiple people are editing files in the repo at the same time, and sometimes on the same exact file as the one that you're currently working on. But you don't see their changes in real time. You only see their changes when you do a Git pull. More on that shortly. But first, let's pretend that we're on a dev team and I'm ready to submit my changes to the group, which takes me to GitHub and GitLab. They're simply places to host your software. When you upload your app, either into GitHub or GitLab or some other place, then Git simply timestamps it and you don't need to think about anything. They're taking all the information in that .git file and they're making it presentable to you and everyone else who has access to that repository to see in a glance of all the changes that were made to your repo. And also really cool about Linode's marketplace is that GitLab can be hosted on Linode if you want something private. So we have a cool GitLab marketplace app just for that. Okay, so what is a git commit? Git commit acts as a stamp of approval. Like it's asking me, are you okay with the code that you've written here? So then you include a short description informing others about the changes that you've made and it's ready for the final delivery, which is done through a git push. So what is a git push? Okay, so I've added my changes, I've committed them, and now I'm ready to push them out so that Connor, Ha, and John can see them. However, I don't actually send it to them personally. I mean, I could by simply zipping up the folder and attaching it as an email, but let's not do that. Instead, I'll upload it to the online repo. And remember, uploading our changes is called a push. So the GitLab or GitHub repo acts as a master storage location that everyone can push their work to. You can imagine that on a team of four people, there's a constant stream of activity and Git, the underlying technology, is keeping tabs of who changed what. So now that I've pushed to the repo, someone like Ha could do a Git pull on her end and have a local copy that is up to date and has a paper trail of all the history that has happened to it. So you may be wondering, why can't I just version control locally instead of Git push to a repo? 
This is a common question, and the power of Git version control is when you zoom out and look at the scenario from the beginning of this episode. But if you're at a company of 20 developers with everyone doing feature sets in different time zones and release deadlines, then Git is awesome. Like one person can be creating the homepage while you work on the contact form, or another person can be merging another branch while you're pushing up a bug that you just fixed. You need a master location to host all of these changes. If there are 20 developers working on something, you can't have 20 different repos. That would just be horrible. So now we have our repo, but there's two other terms which you'll hear a lot, forking and cloning. Forking is sort of like creating a new timeline for the repo without touching the original timeline. In the history of Linux video, I showed the map of Linux distros. These are all forks. A developer came along and said, this open source software is great, but I want to add to it. So they fork it, start adding their own spin to it, and then release their version of it. Okay, so now what are Git clones? Forking and cloning are sort of the same thing. The main difference being that forking puts a copy of the repo onto your own online repository, whereas cloning puts a copy of the repo onto your local computer. All right, so now what is a Git branch? Now that you understand Git forks and Git clones, let's learn branches. When you create a repo, the default branch is called master. But what's great is that you can create as many branches as you want. A branch is sort of like a timeline of your repo. It's a fork that you're keeping for yourself, not for other people. When you create a new branch, this fork lives inside of your repo. Sometimes when I code, I don't even use branches at all. If it's something simple, I just code in the same master branch from start to finish. However, one way that I do use branches is that once I have a stable version of my repo, then I'll branch it off with a feature, like a shopping cart, for example, by creating a feature cart branch. So now if something were to break while I'm coding the shopping cart, then I can just hit the nuclear button and know that in a worst case scenario, I can roll back to a fully working app in my other branch. So by creating another branch, my repository would have two simultaneous branches at the same time. It would have master and feature forward slash cart. And then once I get that new shopping cart to be stable, then I'll merge it back to the master branch. So there's this thing called staging in Git, and it's the idea that you're getting it ready to ship out. You have to add it to the staging area. You have to commit to it, give it a message of what you've committed, and then push it up to the cloud. So let's do this together. I have a simple splash page here and I'll make some changes to the code. I'll change the text background color and I'll do a live preview to see how it looks before I add and then commit. And okay, this looks good. So now I'll open up terminal, which VS Code has one, and I'll type git add dot. The dot means everything. So this line is saying, add every change in this entire project to the repo git commit dash m new text background to keep a note on what I changed. And that says commit those changes and here's a message that the text background is now a new color. And finally, I'll send it off using git push. When I go back to GitHub, then I can see the changes. This rabbit hole goes deep, but it's all right there. You'll also notice there's an option here to clone the repo, which we talked about. And that's it. Now I can see who wrote which code or roll back to a previous version or split my needs off into different feature sets and dev teams. So let's recap. One, Git is simply version control and it's easy to install. Two, when your code is ready to be pushed up to the repo, then you git add, git commit, and then git push. The process is called staging. The git add is like putting your code into a box. Git commit is like taping up the box to repair it for shipment. And then git push is like sending it away to the repo. Three, git forks are when someone else splits a repo hosted online. Git branches are when someone splits their own repo so they can have two versions in front of them with two different timelines. And four, remember that this video was meant to be an introduction so that you understand Git, GitHub, and GitLab. But if you want to take your studies further, then you can look into other Git commands like Git log, Git status, and Git checkout. And that's it. I hope this video helped you out a lot. And be sure to commit to our YouTube channel by pressing subscribe. Thanks.